There's nothing like a day at the beach. The sun is shining, there's a slight ocean breeze, you're reading your favorite book, enjoying a cocktail, and a shark has a hold of your leg. Ah, nothing like it. Wait, a shark? Everyone around you panics. You struggle to get your leg back, twisting and turning, trying to swim away. But his teeth only sink further and further into your flesh. He's got a look of hunger in his eye, and you are on the menu. Suddenly, the adrenaline kicks in, and you punch him right in the nose so hard that he finally lets go, and you manage to get away. Not this time, Jaws. Not this time. Now, you're the local hero, with the shark tooth necklace to prove it. And that's all well and nice, if life was a movie. In reality, that series of events is super duper unlikely. With how sharks have been portrayed by Hollywood, it's no wonder the public's views on sharks are a little misguided. In fact, pop culture has a big influence on people's opinions. After the Jaws movie came out in 1975, thousands of fishermen set out to hunt and capture great white sharks. So much so that countries like Australia and the US have orchestrated protection plans against hunting sharks. But with the recent release of movies like The Meg, sharks now have a newfound target on their back, especially since the Megalodon is extinct. For those of you scratching your heads at the term Megalodon, we're talking a prehistoric shark three times the size of a great white shark, 276 sharp teeth, and a bite force 10 times that of a great white. But remember, they're extinct. You don't have to worry about those. However, all this brings up the question, are sharks really that violent and vengeful? Firstly, it's likely you'll never even encounter a shark in your lifetime, unless you're an avid surfer or head to the aquarium. And your odds of being attacked by a shark are 11.5 million to one. To compare, your odds of being struck by lightning are 700,000 to one. Hey, maybe we should do a video on how to survive a lightning strike. In fact, I think we will. Go ahead and turn on that bell notification so you don't miss out. But more on that later. Let's get back to business. For more perspective on the rarity of a battle with one of these submarines with teeth, you're more likely to be attacked by a horse or even your dog than a shark. Okay, so maybe you're still scared of sharks. Who wouldn't be? It could tear you apart in milliseconds. So here are some things to avoid. Fishing boats. One thing Jaws got right. Fishermen hook fish, which releases blood. The sharks smell the blood and come in search of food. Kinda like when you walk by a donut shop and that gorgeous glazy dough scent wafts outside, you can't help but crave those delicious round goodnesses. Also, don't swim when it's dark out. Most shark attacks on humans are due to mistaken identity. So when there's limited visibility, you become breakfast. Also, for all you swimmers too busy to get out of the water to find a bathroom, sharks can smell urine too. Okay, now, let's say you accidentally attract a shark with your tasty, tasty skin. How do you get out of this situation? Don't panic. That's the worst thing you can do. Easier said than done, I know. But moving around and splashing will only excite the shark more. So hopefully your instincts tell you to stay still. Even if the shark bumps you. That's not a sign she'll eat you. Sharks can't explore new objects with their hands. They've got none. So they might give you a nose bump to say, Hey, what are you? Make sure to keep eye contact and that the shark doesn't get behind you. And if it's not attacking yet, make yourself as small as possible. That way, she'll see you as non-threatening. Now, here's what to do if that shark woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Punch that sucker. Yeah, that's right, just punch it. Sharks are sensitive in their gills, so that's the perfect spot. An Australian surfer named Mick Fanning did exactly that and lived to tell the tale. Same with American Joe Tanner. He punched a great white right in the gills until he let go of his leg. After your punch, just slowly back away. Keep in mind, one of the few reasons a shark would attack is if it has been provoked. And that is the basics of surviving your underwater encounter. Now, if you want to take your shark survival quest a step further, you can invest in a wetsuit that's invisible to sharks. A company called Shark Attack Mitigation Systems is developing such a thing which camouflages you into the water, as well as masks your smell. There are also so many misconceptions about sharks that really affect the way humans treat them. For example, sharks are indestructible, spawned from the legend that they can't get cancer. It's false. Sharks can get cancer, but it is very rare. In fact, this misconception has spread so far that people are hunting sharks to eat them in order to cure cancer. No one quite knows how sharks have developed this disease. But most recently, a great white was found with a one-foot-by-one-foot one tumor on its mouth. 
Another shark curiosity, they don't have bones. This is true. Don't worry, they're not just some slimy, slinky tubes of jelly. They've got cartilage. The reason behind this is most likely due to the lighter weight of cartilage, which allows them to move quicker. Ah, here's another great way to escape a shark. Grow cartilage instead of bones. So, now you're ready to fend off any shark. But the best way to not get into these situations is to avoid them and not attack first. And remember that films and television portray sharks in a vilifying way. They won't keep coming back day after day trying to get revenge for something. They're animals, just looking for food and trying to survive. They won't start flying around in tornadoes. Although, if they do, I've got no tips for you. Just run for your life. Run!